Good happy Wednesday afternoon and happy first day of fall everyone. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Wednesday afternoon edition of the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday afternoon, so let's get started right now. First up, let's go to meteorologist Kevin Skirpa and take a look at your weather for this afternoon and what to expect. And we can tell you that um, is humid in New Hampshire on this first afternoon of fall with a few clouds as well. With more on that weather forecast, let's go to meteorologist Kevin Skruba right now. Humidity continues to come up even on the first day of autumn. It'll be around for the first few days of the autumn season. As a matter of fact, through Friday until that front you see back out in the Ohio Valley eventually gets here, which is probably not until Friday afternoon with the steady rain. Out ahead of that, a little more humidity in the air, plenty of clouds, and a couple of occasional lighter showers into the afternoon or this evening with some patchy fog and drizzle around with lows in the 60s overnight. As far as tomorrow is concerned, we'll be looking for temperatures again to go back into the low and mid-70s. This will be with a chance of a passing shower here or there. I think we even see a couple of sunny breaks as we go through the afternoon. Beyond that, we're looking at the steadier rain to make its way in during the daylight hours on Friday. There could be a couple of embedded thunderstorms with that front as it makes its way through. Humidity will drop quickly behind that later Friday night and early Saturday and leave us to more comfortable conditions for the weekend with partial sunshine expected. Upper 60s to mid-70s this afternoon, a few light showers through tomorrow. And again, that steadier rainfall for Friday, partial clearing setting up for the weekend. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Kevin Skrupa. Retired police sergeant killed in hit and run in Kingston. Investigators seek tips from public. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Whoa, this is big. The Powerball jackpot is so big you can see it from space. So big it's bursting up the seams. It's so big that the jackpot hit the jackpot. Buy your tickets today online at nhlottery.com or in stores. Now we are following some breaking news. State police are investigating a deadly hit and run that happened in Kingston. They say 59-year-old Donna Briggs of Derry was riding her bike on Route 125 yesterday morning when it appears she was hit from behind. Her body was found around 8.30 last night. Troopers say video from a nearby business shows a dark-colored vehicle hit her. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And she worked for the Hudson Police Department. Retired New Hampshire Catholic Bishop John McCormack dead at 86. McCormack served as Bishop of Diocese of Manchester for 13 years. Former Concord teacher to plead guilty to sex trafficking charges. Joshua Harwood of Manchester, a former high school teacher and university business professor, faces up to seven years in prison. A former Concord High School teacher and Southern New Hampshire University professor who was arrested on prostitution and child sexual abuse image charges is scheduled to plead guilty in court on Wednesday to a single felony of trafficking count. Joshua Harwood, 38, of Manchester, currently in created at 
the Merrimack County Jail in Boston informed the Merrimack County Superior Court on Tuesday he would be pleading guilty to a single felony charge of trafficking in person. Originally, Harward was arrested on February 4th after a multi-week investigation by police into a tip about a Concord High School teacher who was communicating with young men on a dating app site for gay and bisexual men and the trans community. During his interactions, he pretended to be a high school student according to investigators Oreo document. A former student who hooked up with Harwood in exchange for cash realized he was a teacher and father and not a high school student. He informed the school district and police about the encounter, which led Harwood being placed on leave in December of 2020. Police investigated Harward's online activity dating back to January of 2019 and accused him of making 38 Venmo transactions to five men and one boy, according to an affidavit. He was interacting with at least one of the men while teaching, according to the investigation. After being arraigned in Superior Court, Harward faced dozens of charges. He was indicated on 10 felonious counts of possession and related offenses, 9 counts of manufacturing of child sexual abuse images, and 9 felony counts of trafficking in persons earlier this year. According to a plea agreement, he will be sentenced to between three and a half in seven years. Stand committed, meaning he will serve some t jail time. The judge could award Harward with jail time credited, which will be determined at the sentencing. Seven months could also be shaved from the sentence upon completion of a sex offender program. Harward could also be fined up to 4000 Harvard, according to online reports, taught business at SNHU and also worked in the Farmington School District before coming to Concord. He grew up in Situate. Harvard holds a business administration degree with a minor in psychology. In April of 2018, while at SNHU, he was described as an average Joe. Harward was awarded the University College F Faculty Academic Advisor of the Year Award in 2017. And he will be due in court today. Biden responds to a surge of migrants at the southern U.S. border. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Monkey Shoulder believes first dates, just like your whiskey, don't have to be so serious. I love the ballet, but I'm also... One of the president's response from our chief White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, seeing the president getting it from all sides. George, he really is. And the fact that you've got Chuck Schumer, the leading Senate Democrat, publicly blasting the president over this and other Democrats as well is actually a really big deal. And this morning, you've even got the head of the NAACP demanding to meet with the president over this. The administration is really boxed into a political corner on this one. You had the president campaigning on taking a more humanitarian approach uh, to the southern border. He really ran on being everything Donald Trump isn't when it comes to immigration. But the reality is this White House is using the same Trump-era, pandemic-era rule 
uh, using COVID as a reason to not allow, to not give these migrants the opportunity to claim, legally claim asylum here in the United States. Um, the administration has struggled to respond to some of these images that you're looking at right there. Initially, uh, Mayorkas, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary, said that described the scene there as chaotic, saying these officers were using their horses to try to control their horses. But then you've got now Mayorkas and other officials saying that these images are horrific. George, we haven't heard very much from the president directly on this one. His press secretary, Jen Psaki, says that he does not believe that these images represent the position of the administration or for the country, for that matter. Cecilia, we did hear from the president yesterday at the U.N. his first speech. Let's listen in. Our security, our prosperity, and our very freedoms are interconnected in my view, as never before. And so, I believe we must work together as never before. The speech was a place to see, in his words, for relentless diplomacy. Yeah, exactly. And really what he was doing here is trying to extend an olive branch, mend some fences after some of these really tough international setbacks that he's faced with allies. He talked about calling on the global community here to work together to fight COVID and climate change. He did defend that chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan that had so many allies outraged. George, today the president's going to hold a COVID summit here at the White House. Part of the U.N. still uh, back here at the White House because of COVID where he's calling on uh, developed nations to give more vaccines to underdeveloped countries. Cecilia Vega, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That is it for this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for joining us for this afternoon edition. Have a great rest of your afternoon and see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a newsday bar coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you for watching.